All right, so first we'll take a look at the box. This is actually the 174th Assault Helicopter Company, the Shark. And they had a shark mouth there. This is actually the Mexican Express version. And what's on the outside of the box, it's really interesting, is not the actual helicopter. This is just another model that they had. And that one actually looks pretty sweet too. It's a gunship version. But yeah, so the box looks good. The graphics are amazing. You'll be able to see that the weathering they do on these are really good. Okay, so JSI and Merit actually got this mold for this Huey from 21st Century Toys after they went out of business. And it looks really good. You'll see it's similar to the one that I reviewed from 21st Century Toys, but with a major difference being the paint and the weathering. Merit JSI did a way better job typically. Okay, so I forgot to show the bottom. It's weird. They actually put the description of the helicopter on the bottom of the box instead of on the side or the back, but here it is just so you can see it. Okay, so that's all that came in the box besides these instructions, and they're very basic. There's not even a back. It just shows you how to install the rocket pods, and I believe this is the XM21 minigun that'll be installed right here as well. So a typical package, same as 21st Century Toys. They wrapped a lot of their stuff in foam and then also plastic. Looks like here, it looks like these are the rocket pods. Yeah, and I can already tell these are better detail than the 21st Century Toys. I mean, it looks like you have even some smoke from the rockets being fired, gunpowder. So here are the rotor blades, and they look exactly like the 21st Century Toys model rotor blades. Um, literally identical. I don't think they made any changes, not even weathering or anything. Oh, I take it back. Look at that. They did make some weathering on there. See, it's a little details that they did. And the paint is a little different on this yellow tip here. So they did package them separately. 21st Century Toys um, also came like that, I believe. Actually, they may have come in a bundle. But yeah, really good job on the packaging with these because a lot of times they would rub against each other and shear some of the paint off. But that looks really good. I like it. All right, and there's not a lot of weathering to this part. Um, it actually looks a lot cheaper. You can even see the plastic molding where they pulled it off right there. But I mean, at least it does a decent job of looking metal. Pretty cool. Same thing with this one. Again, I just think the paint overall is a little better than the 21st Century Toys, but the same exact quality, same plastic it seems like even. All right, we're gonna get these mini guns off first because they come already pre-attached. The ammo goes straight in, which is nice. That's a realistic feature. The ammo box is underneath the seat back there. I'll get a better close-up video in here in a second, but we're going to go ahead and take this off just that way I don't damage it. Let's see what that looks like up close too. Again, good job with the weathering. It's a cool little minigun. Get the stabilizers off. More weathering there. And I like the color green they used on this. Looks like it had more wear and use, like right there. I don't know a whole lot about the 174 Shark Company. I couldn't find a lot online, but that's pretty cool. It looks like they're from Texas or somebody was from Texas. So if you know anything, shoot me a message in the comments. I just saw one picture which had the Mexican Express art on the Huey with the mini guns and the rocket pods, same setup as this. But it looks like, I forgot, there's actually two screws underneath here. So let me get these off. All right, but first, as you know, collecting models can get expensive. So I wanna take a quick second and thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video. And if you've never heard of a VPN before, it stands for Virtual Private Network, which helps keep you secure online by encrypting the data sent between your device and the internet so no one can steal your identity while you're on public Wi-Fi. A VPN can also be used to access content like movies or shows that might not be available in your location. And it's actually super easy. You just use Surfshark to change the virtual location of your device so you can access that content. Here's how it works. Let's say I'm in the mood for a classic aviation movie pull up Netflix, type in Flight of the Intruder, nothing, because it's not available in my location. However, all you have to do is pull up the Surfshark app on your Android, Apple device, or on your web browser, and with one click, change your virtual location, go back to Netflix, and boom, Flight of the Intruder. I highly recommend Surfshark, and I do actually personally use it. It's the only VPN that allows unlimited devices on a single account. There's also a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out. Go use my code MILITARY to get 83% off plus an additional three months free. I'll also put a link in the video description below. Okay, I got the screws off. I actually like that they did that. Just uh, held it on a little more secure. I don't know if they want me to put them back in. I'm not going to obviously, because it just doesn't look very good. And I don't like that they left those two little black things there, but is what it is. I guess it's better for shipping. 
But one thing too I noticed that you guys will notice too if you saw my other video, this one doesn't come with a helicopter pilot. But don't worry, I've got two extra pilots from my other 21st Century Toys Huey because that one came with actually four. It came with two soldiers and two pilots. So I'll be adding one of those to here as well. All right, so here's everything that came with it, with the instructions, of course. I'm probably gonna assemble the rocket pods first and then the minigun. That way, I don't have to worry about them falling off. Okay, so for the instructions, the longer end goes toward the front, and it looks like you just pop it on. I mean, there's no screws or anything. So, yeah, that actually fits really good. Again, much better detail than the 21st Century Toys one. That one just looked like a toy. However, the Huey itself was really nice. So you gotta be careful about the ammo belt here. It looks like it does get twisted. And then let me kind of let that fall underneath here and see if I can get that on good. There we go. I don't know what I'm gonna do about this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it wasn't supposed to be underneath there like that. So let me do a little research and see where that's supposed to go. In the meantime, I'm gonna get the other side on as well. So same concept, you just push it in. And you can actually angle it a little bit too, which is nice. Um, the other version was fixed, 21st century toy, so you couldn't angle it at all, actually. And a lot of them came upside down. They were different rocket pods too. I think they were the 20 rockets instead of these, which here are six or seven, actually. All right, I gotta figure out what to do with this ammo belt real quick. Okay, I do wanna point something out too. So there is a little tab right here on the bottom, and then that actually lines up with that slot in the minigun, so it can only go that way. Okay, so I was able to find some more pictures. Looks like they did just droop it up over the rocket pods here and just leave it hanging like that. I saw a lot of different pictures where some of them had different ways, like one of them had like an attachment up here, I believe, that would hold it up. But in this version, I'm just gonna try to do what I saw in the pictures and just droop it over like that. Find a way to do that because I think it looks really good. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of a close up as well. You can see some of the detail there. The engine, they did a really good job with the Mexican Express logo as well, or artwork. And then the shark mouth paint looks really good as well. I will point something out with this one side over here. The mini gun was loose, so I might have to stick a little bit of glue, if not, maybe some tack that way, ticky tack, that way it doesn't stick on permanently if I ever want to take it off, because it doesn't stay in there as hard as I push, and I don't want to break it, but. You can see some of the lights under here. You have light up here, here and here, same as the 21st Century Toys, as well as up here. And then again, I think, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same mold. Um, and even the plastic, like I said, feels the same. You do have the green tent, which is nice. You have the pedo tube, and then you have, of course, the wire cutter, which actually right here on the 21st Century Toy version of the pedo tube, this was actually sticking up, and some people pointed it out in my video, but what I did is just heat it up on the other one and bend it down a little, so I'll show you all that in a little bit, but I got it looking good, so it looks like that. Okay, and I wanna point out, this is actually the wire strike protection, not called the wire cutter. <laughs> so it's the wire strike protection. Basically, if any cable, from my understanding, power line cable, of course, power line would be really bad, but any cable came up to the helicopter, this will hopefully clip it off before it actually got to the rotors. So there's just a close up underneath. You can see there's not 21st Century Toys logo, obviously. They didn't even put their logo, Merit or JSI, which I actually appreciate. I like a clean version better. The skids look good. They're green on top and black on the bottom. They didn't paint the underside, but at least they did put some weathering there. And then we're gonna actually, I'm gonna try to get this on a little better, and then we're gonna assemble the tail. All right, so to assemble the tail, it's really simple. You just take this end and it has these little tabs and then you just push it in. So let's see, hopefully it lines up. Just be careful if you get this, that you don't break anything. So see, here, here's what bothers me, and y'all can see this too right here, is it doesn't line up 100%, and when they painted this, they painted it separate, right? They painted this section separately from this, and it wasn't attached, so you can see states is a little separated and also a little lower here, and that, I mean, just bothers me. I mean, especially because of the paint. It looks so good and that little bit of separation kind of deters from it. So, I mean, other than that though, I really, really like this model, especially compared to the 21st Century Toys, just because you'll see in a second here, but just because the details, 
the paint, even the guns look so much better. All right, so let's do the rotors now. All you do is you take this piece right here and just pop it in. It does spin, but not as freely as the 21st Century Toys version. You got a little detail inside here. I don't know if you can see that. There we go, a little detail in there. All right, and then for the actual rotor blades, they just slot in. Okay, I wanted to point something else out too. When you're installing the rotor blades, they're very hard to get back off. So I wanted to show you that because when you push it on, there's this little opening here and underneath this part is a tab right there. And when you push it on, it's really hard to get back off. So just be careful because these are fragile here. And it does only go on one way. You'll see right there, it also clips in to that tab right there. So, looks good. Let's see if it spins okay. No, it doesn't really spin. The uh, 21st Century Toys one spin really well. But that's not a big deal, because I'm not going to be spinning them anyways. <laughs> it's going to be a static display. But that looks really good so far. Yeah, i got to fix that minigun. Alright, so, same thing with the rear. You just have these little tabs that you just slot in. Except these just push in pretty easy. There we go. And those do spin pretty well. All right, so only thing we have left are the stabilizers here. And then to install those, really, really easy. You just take the tab and you just pop it in. Like that. Same thing the other side. I will point something out. They don't really want to fit that good. So the other one went in okay, but they look a little wider than that hole. So I'm just going to be careful. Um, I don't really want to break them. <laughs> so I'll try to get them at the same time, maybe. Oh, well, I did have it backwards. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, maybe that's why. So looks really good. All right, I'll let y'all look at it completed here for a second. Okay, so this version is a little rear end heavy. As you can see, it does kind of want to bounce backwards, but it is still on skids. So here's just a closer view. You can't open up the engine compartment, unfortunately, and nothing else really moves. This was a little loose. Well, let me think it was on this side over here. Yeah, that one was a little loose, so I'm just gonna put some glue. Looks like the glue either just dried out or they didn't have any to begin with. But other than this, honestly, I love this model other than that one little thing. But I mean, and then of course, this will just take a little bit of fixing, but not a big deal. And these doors do actually slide in and out. Um, you'll obviously need to take off the minigun, put it inside. You don't really have a way to detach it from the inside. So you kind of just have to set it in there unless you broke it. Um, but you can actually close the doors. They do operate. Same thing with the front doors. All right, here we go. I'll show you there's a fire extinguisher in there. You zoom in, show you a little more detail. There's some detail on the gauges. I mean, just basically paint, but everything's there at least, except for the upper console. I don't know why the upper panel they didn't install. I guess because you don't really see it anyways when you're looking at it, but that would have been a really cool addition if they had done that. Back seat, there are seat belts underneath there, but I mean, there's just a little bit of paint, that's it. They're actually plastic, they're not fabric or anything. And then the floor, you can see, it does, cool, it does look pretty cool because it has some of the detail that you would see. And then on the roof, same thing, it does have a little bit of that detail too, which is pretty cool. I figured I will show you real quick how the door works. Just take the minigun off and then you just slide it like that. So if you want to see it with one of the sides of the door closed or if you just don't want to use the miniguns at all, if you want to somehow take them off, you can close the door if you want. All right, so as we discussed, this one didn't come with any pilots, but this is one of the pilots from the 21st Century Toys model, which I think they did a really good job of this. 
And I mean, I think it looks pretty good. And this is actually the insignia of the cavalry for the other one. But I'm going to use it for this one here. That way I have a pilot in each of them. And then what I'm going to do is just stick one of the other figures in the other spot in the co-pilot. So as far as fitting in there, he fits pretty good. The way they did the knees was weird. So you can only angle them like 90 degrees. You can't like adjust them. He's never going to touch the pedals, unfortunately, or even be able to grab the collective or cyclic, but it still looks really good. Looks better than nobody being in there at all. And then it also came with two pilots, a co-pilot and pilot, and then also two of these soldiers. So I'm going to stick one of these in here as well, possibly in the co-pilot spot or just sitting back here. But either way, really good model, really impressed. Let's see if I can get this guy holding on. Eh, I did it like that in the other model, but yeah. So really impressed. Honestly, if you can find one, I'd recommend getting one of these probably over the 21st century toys model, which I will show you right now. Okay, so here's a comparison I was telling you about. JSI Merit version, 21st century toys. This one still looks really good. I mean, I'm not complaining about it at all. Here's the pedo tube that had a heat and been down looks really good as well just not as much weathering as you can see here on this one but as far as the actual paint goes it still looks good i mean everything's the exact same still had the issue here that i was talking about with the other one with the line in between where you connect the two pieces but other than that really it's the exact same model see even the rotor blades exact same so there's the two side by side. Either way, I don't think you can go wrong. If you can find either one, I would highly recommend it. And the 21st Century Toys one came with two of these guys and two pilots. So this is more of a rare one, if I'm honest with you. Most of them only come with two soldiers or one pilot and one soldier. But yeah, definitely recommend if you can find them. They both went out of business. So unfortunately, they don't make any of these anymore. If you're watching this video, I know a lot of people ask, where do you get these? Well, you can find them on eBay. That's where I get most of mine or just local, like Facebook Marketplace. If you have that, just try to see if you can find some websites. Sometimes they'll pop up online. But other than that, you just have to keep looking. It took me a while to find both of these. I just ended up finding this. I've been looking for one of these for a while, especially with a shark mouth. So, but yeah, hope you guys liked the video and please be sure to like and subscribe. It definitely helps. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video.